Hello, YouTubers. This is the new Fire. On Friday, the 7th of May, there was an hour long Star Citizen Live to follow up on the previous Inside Star Citizen about scanning. Before I continue with today's show, there were some comments from viewers who had no idea about Mark being referred to as the Bug Smasher. Bug Smashers! Mark hosted a segment in Around the Verse called Bug Smashers, where he would pick a bug from a list and show us what the issue was and how he fixed it. Due to legal issues with Crytek and the nature of Mark's show showing code being edited live, plus the show being a distraction from performing actual development, the show isn't made anymore, but Mark is still smashing bugs. Here's what you need to know about today's show. Mark and Sean took questions from Spectrum and from live chat, but they started with a basic overview just like yesterday. Passive collection is collecting by looking at what's detectable. Ping requires you to announce yourself, like in a submarine. However, you get info that you would not normally see. And scanning is the act of acquiring detailed information about the object. The closer that you are, the better the information, but perhaps the more risk you place yourself in by doing the scan. Mark said that they're pushing the update from legacy scanning systems over to the next couple of patches. Shipborne first, but they do plan to add the same features for dismounted players. Small ships have less capable scanners, so Mark said that we should expect player-based scanners to have an even more local-based scan. Scanning can be designed to perform specific functions such as mining, medical, or even finding harvestables. Scanning can also be linked in the future to other devices, improving the data that the player can see, providing the correct connectivity exists. Mark confirmed that the point of scanning for exploration will be to save it and sell it to players who want it. Mark said that it's been an evolution working with the ship design team to make a HUD able to display the information that you would like to see without cluttering everything up. They also said that in the future, there may be a possibility for the player to further customize the HUD based on our preferences. Linking everything with e-warfare, stealth and signatures is intended to be a deep part of gameplay. Mark reconfirmed that large ships can mask smaller ones, but then he went deeper by saying that this would open up need to create a specialized scanner that could detect the smaller ship sooner as an upgrade. Sean said that running with all systems turned off would lower the detectability, but there is always a cross-section. You could mask cross-section by sneaking in asteroids or in certain gas clouds, but in open space, the larger your ship is, the more easily you'll be detected. Sean confirmed that cross-section is modeled properly, so a ship head-on would have a smaller cross-section than if it was passing perpendicular. Mark said that certain combat ships, such as the Gladius, have practically no head-on cross-section, and this is done by design. Ships that can transform for landing would experience a variable cross-section as well. Mark wanted to add scanning pages for the MFD, which would serve not only as a display, but a way to dial in how scanners work. Multi-crew stations in 314 will allow players to scan while the pilot is flying, where any information discovered will be available to the entire crew. The hour-long show was a cool back and forth, with expected answers to the questions from the Q&A. A lot of it sounded as if parts are mostly still in the brainstorming phase, waiting on other features to be designed and added. That's it. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.